episode one of the History Of podcast, where we talk about the history of random things. I'm Emma. And I'm Robert. And uh, today, well, I'm just going to mention our egg carton count is eight. And what that means is we have eight egg cartons on our wall in our ongoing project for a better studio with better dampening and better sound quality. Today, we're going to be talking about the history of Ultimate Frisbee. Now, Robert and I both play in high school Ultimate Frisbee, so we have a little bit of experience on the topic. About three years. Um, yeah, when a uh, high school league, uh, 25 and 0 this year, our team is. Boop, boop. And uh, yeah, we're doing pretty well, but of course, things have been canceled um, due to the recent pandemic. But first off, I think I need to mention a distinction that needs to be made between Ultimate Frisbee and Disc Golf. A lot of people say, when we tell people that we play Ultimate Frisbee, they're like, oh, I love Disc Golf. And no, it's not the same. It breaks my heart a little bit. Not the same thing. Uh, And while this episode is not about Disc Golf, I think I'm going to give you a little rundown on what it is. It's exactly how it sounds. Uh, golf played with a disc, nine or 18 holes. Um, actually, in 1926, uh, Canadian children played what is considered the first game of disc golf uh, by flinging metal lids onto circles on the ground. Uh, today, instead of a hole like you'd have in traditional golf, uh, it's played with chains, uh, or what we call chains. It's like a stand that catches uh, the disc. And the disc is uh, slightly weighted and smaller than the... Uh, the ultimate frisbee disc, which is uh, like a standard 175 grams, uh, that's meant to be thrown and caught easily. Um, and actually, I have a friend uh, who's, I believe, a world champion in this sport in in disc golf in his age group, and he gets paid in discs, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, he's sponsored by Innova, so I think that's really cool. So, although the sport of Ultimate Frisbee may seem like a recently created game to some, its basic origins date back to almost 150 years ago. Yeah, in the 1870s, Yale University students threw pie tins from the Frisbee Pie Company, spelled F-R-I-S-B-I-E. They threw these pie tins back and forth, and the undergrads would shout Frisbee when they threw the tins, uh, helping to give uh, the name that the sport has now. The first plastic disc was invented in 1948. The invention was later named the Pluto Platter and was sold to Waymo in 1955, who released it to the public in 1957. In 1958, the disc was renamed as the Frisbee Disc, F-R-I-S-B-E-E. After the release of this product, various games similar to Ultimate Frisbee were invented, such as Guts in 1958. Uh, Jared Crass, or Cass, not Crass, Cass, K-A-S-S, has been given credit for helping to create the sport, now known as Ultimate Frisbee, with his peers at Amherst College in 1966. Cass later taught the game to Joel Silver at a camp in either 1967 or 1968. Silver brought the sport back to Columbia High School in New Jersey, where the game was further grown. Columbia High School played the nearby Milburn High School in 1970 and resulted in a conference for four high school teams being created a year later. In 1972, the sport was carried over to Princeton and Rutgers, who played the first official Ultimate game at the college level. Yeah, and uh, I think a moral keystone or a big part of Ultimate Frisbee in general is something called Spirit of the Game. And that's not a big part of other sports, but it's what sets Ultimate ultimate Frisbee apart. Um, and Spirit of Game uh, began not as a rule, but was simply a mindset of players were against, uh, quote, the cultural norms. And actually, every year whenever we enroll in the uh, spring or fall Ultimate seasons, we actually have to sign a Spirit of the Game form saying mm-hmm. that we will abide by Spirit of the Game. But these, anyway, these... Um, cultural norms of not competitive because ultimate is still very competitive uh there are rivalries but just teams like hating each other trash Mm -hmm. talking uh any of that is totally wiped away by spirit of the game we actually have spirit circles Mm -hmm. 
We do, yeah. At the end of uh, end of games, some teams do, where uh, everyone gets in a circle, shoulder over shoulder, uh, and we make sure that you know the teams are mixed together, and you just we talk about like the things the other uh, other team did better, things individual players uh, did well, and so it's there's a lot of team bonding. Uh, yeah. even in rivalries. Yeah, the spirit circle might sound cheesy, but honestly, when you participate in one, it's such a good experience. It really is. And we even can, we some teams even give spirit prizes. Mm-hmm. Our team does a pack of gum to... Uh, we give packs of gum to the two players on the other team who embodied spirit of the game the most. Uh, but anyway, spirit of the game was... It was not until 1978 that it was included into... Uh, the official rules of Ultimate. Yes. I just want to make one quick side note. For There can be many unique Spirit of the Game gifts. doesn't really matter. At our last tournament, we gave away uh, an entire baguette as a Spirit of the Game award. We did. We, we did. told them they got the bread. They did get that bread. Even though we won the tournament. This is true. By 1984, the World Flying Disc Federation had been created, serving as the international governing body for the sport of flying disc. In the United States, uh, there are two predominant uh, professional Ultimate Leagues, USA Ultimate and the American Ultimate Disc League, or AUDL. USA Ultimate, established in 1979, encompasses youth, college, club, masters, and beach divisions. I want to try the beach division. That sounds like fun. That's about uh, five, I think it's only four or five players, and it's... It was added in 2015, so it's pretty new. Must be kind of rough running in the sand. Yeah. USA Ultimate has a long, narrow field, which is not optimal for spectators. As a result, uh, AUD, the AUDL was created, uh, established in 2012, and it has a wider field uh, designed with the audience in mind. The field has more of the proportions of a football field. I think it actually takes up a whole football field. I'm not sure about that, though. I'm pretty sure it does. Anyway, uh AUDL, the AUDL has 22 teams from both the U.S. and Canada, including the Dallas Roughnecks, uh, Toronto Rush, my personal favorite, the D.C. Breeze, boop, boop. as well as several others. Uh, but the uh, AUDL only has one division, and that's adult men's. Today, the love of Ultimate Frisbee has spread to over 80 nations. Although the official creation of this sport was established fairly recently in comparison to other sports, Ultimate Frisbee has rapidly increased in popularity, spreading fitness, fun, and good spirit to millions across the globe. And that was the bite-sized history of Ultimate Frisbee. Have a blessed day, and stay safe, stay aware, and be safe out there. Uh, If you have any questions or comments uh, about the content of this episode, uh, please contact us at thehistoryof365 at gmail.com.